Live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE, covering .conf 2017. Brought to you by Splunk. Welcome back to Washington, D.C. The Cube continuing our coverage here of .conf 2017. It's the, uh, the Splunk get together here in Washington, D.C. We're at the Washington Convention Center where they have a record crowd, 7,000 plus. Everybody having a Splunking good time, you might say. Dave Vellante, John Walls here. And we're joined by a couple of gentlemen who work with Transalta. Uh, Kent Ferries on the far left, who is a senior analyst and security, working in security intelligence and analytics as well at Transalta. Kent, mm -hmm. good morning to you, sir. I guess good, good afternoon, we've crossed that threshold is, here on yeah, the East Coast, uh, haven't we? Uh, and Akina Wafur, who is a Senior Information Security Specialist at Trans Alta as well. So good morning to you. Thank you, good morning. I, I, uh, Kent, maybe if you could just tee us up a little bit about Trans Alta. Sure. Tell us a little bit about what your core function, you know, what you all are up to, and then how the two of you are uh, uh, helping that mission along its way. Sure. Um, uh, Transalta is a, is a well-respected power generator and wholesale marketer of electricity that's been in business for over 100 years. We're based out of uh, Calgary, Canada, and we have operations in the United States as well as Australia. Okay. Uh, myself and Ikenna are uh, part of the security team based out of Calgary, and then we also have, uh, um, we've offshored or outsourced some uh, of the security operations center function. Which I imagine Mm -hmm. is vast, right? I mean, you've got, you've got, you know, I mean, uh, I mean, your, your primary mission, obviously, security, I would assume, of the grid, uh, yep. distribution of power. Yep. You are correct. Uh, that's your number one focus. Yeah. Right, so talk about the complexities of that in general for our audience who may not be familiar with your particular business, but you obviously can imagine mm -hmm. uh, the nuances and, and the sensitivities that you have to deal with. Sure, do you want to? Akana, okay, why don't um, you take that? I think um, the fact that uh, we are in the power generation business um, cons uh, makes us a critical infrastructure, and that means um, working and having uh, ties to the grid makes it very um, critical that we uh, protect our critical uh, information systems um, from the uh, threat landscape currently um, in security. So it's, it's a vast, um, um, it's a vast um, responsibility uh, for the team, um, and we have um, regulatory requirements. We need to abide by things around our next SIP and SOX uh, um, compliance requirements. So that's really um, a very daunting task for us to, to meet with from a security standpoint. Right, so it's critical infrastructure yep. that is distributed in its nature, so yep. it's high value exactly. for your target. Yep. And you're going to yep. wake up every day knowing that. Yeah, sure. Yes. Okay, so um, maybe take us through sort of your Splunk journey and, and what role it played, um, kind of the before and, and after, and, and how has it affected your business? Sure. I'll, I'll, I'll take that yep. one. Uh, so in the mid-2000s, uh, you know, we did security and everything, but it wasn't really a key focus of senior management or anything. There wasn't a lot of real breaches. Most of the stuff that was going on was a nuisance, right? Out, out in the marketplace. Kind of activists. Uh, yeah, and different and things. Stuff. So, yeah, sure. you know, we dealt with it. A lot of it still wasn't really coming through the internet. It was still coming through other means, right? So it wasn't at the forefront. Um, even though we would try, say in 2006, to make sure that security was at the forefront, management wasn't quite ready at that time. It wasn't big breaches or anything. Around 2009 is our first introduction to what we call the SIM, the Security Information Event Management Solution, basically log management. We implemented that in 2009, and then we had that running for about five years, until about 2014, but we started to lose some confidence in, in the tool, because it just didn't give us the information that we wanted or needed to uh, properly detect, respond to today's threats. So we stumbled upon Splunk. It took a little while to actually buy it. Um, one of the system engineers tried to sell it to us, and I said, no, nah, come back later. No, nah, no, nah. I don't even know what it is, right? But then finally I actually spun it up, a uh, proof of concept, and I go, this thing is amazing. Everything I ever thought of doing, I can actually do with this tool. This is wow. So took the POC, sold it to management, Come January 2015, we implemented it. We hired a company out of Ontario to help stand it up and bring all the data in. It was amazing. And we had everything we ever wanted and yep. blew away our previous uh, security information event management system. So the SIM fell short 
you said because it didn't really give you the information you needed. Yeah. Uh, was, it, it, was it also a, a case of it was just too much information? You couldn't It was difficult to use. So we actually went on training when we implemented the original one in 2009. So two weeks of training down in the US, come back, architect, still had a consultant help us stand it all up but we couldn't build the use cases that we really needed. We were happy at the time, you know, just to get log data, but really we didn't, well, there's no data enrichment or good correlation capabilities, or it was super, super difficult to implement. You couldn't search something like Splunk Answers, which you can today. I can Google anything and the answer's out there around Splunk, which is just, the community's phenomenal. So at the time you didn't know what you didn't know, yeah. and then once you saw Splunk, it yeah. sort of changed your vision of what was possible, but so you said it was amazing, but like, why is it, is it amazing? What is it about Splunk that, sort of, I, that, that the SIM tools don't do? I, I think uh, to Ken's point, uh, part of the challenge we had with the previous SIM tool was the fact that um, um, it required a, a whole lot of work to even get a single uh, simple use case in place for uh, security. Whereas when we had uh, Splunk in place, one is um, onboarding data, um, logs from various sources was really, really dead simple. Um, the initial setup was um, uh, within a day or half a day to, to bas basically replicate what we had from our previous SIM which was really uh, fast. Um, and then the other thing is uh, Splunk provided a whole lot of flexibility where you really didn't need to go for some two weeks training to actually get going um, initially. And uh, through the period we've had Splunk, we've seen that um, there's been a lot of um, uh, a lot of things we, 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 we've been able to achieve that we couldn't accomplish when we had our previous SIM. Like for example, I mean, I mean uh, what's it letting you do now that day to day that you couldn't do before. So if you buy a SIM, typically it's, it's in a vertical, right? It's serving one purpose. So when you implement that, it's usually the security team that gets to use it, right? And you got to bring in all this log data. Your other teams, say in operations or whatever, they want their log data too, but they're in a totally different system. With Splunk, it's a platform for us. So we bring all the data in, it's consumed by IT security, it's consumed by DevOps and operations. So the same amount of data that you bring in, for, say from an endpoint, mm -hmm. we'll use it for you know, detection, forensic type capabilities, but the desktop team can use it as well to see is there application problems, desktop problems. Do I have drivers or something on a desktop that needs to be updated? We can be more proactive and help out the user. So for us, it's just, it's like a fabric, a foundation. So once we've got that laid, yep. So all these use cases yep. that mm -hmm. you're laying out, yep. previously you would have to essentially customize for each we use case, is that right? So, you, you, you couldn't even. And, and previously, we, we couldn't even do some of them because of, um, and then the other thing is we will most likely need to engage um, a third party contractor to assist us with that, somebody who is a specialist in that um, field. Whereas um, with Splunk, um, uh, some of the key things that has helped us with Splunk is maybe in the process of responding to a security event, we could think up ideas of, uh, we need this information, how do we get it? And on the fly, we can easily build up a use case within minutes mm -hmm. to get the information we, we need from Splunk without needing to consult anyone, without needing to read up manuals. And for instances where we really need uh, information to help us with building up the use cases, going to, um, like uh, Kent uh, mentioned earlier, and going to Splunk Answers, you most likely get, so the, there's a broader community with Splunk that really helps with giving you the information you need to help you on your Splunk journey. Okay, but so it's more intuitive, I'm, I'm, yep. I'm hearing, yep. and it's yep. got the data that you need. Exactly. Right? And, and, and so, but even if you had a, a, an equivalent of Splunk Answers for your previous SIM tool, you're saying you wouldn't have been able to, because it's not flexible enough, it, to sort of ar ar architect what you needed. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'd like to just uh, put a comment in there. So, I've been in IT for a long time, and I've always wanted to say, build my own database to bring stuff in and do different things, so I'm pretty good at scripting. But I don't want to be designing a full application or whatever. When I saw Splunk and how easy it was to onboard data, I go, wow, this is amazing. So when I brought the consultant in and we stood up our original infrastructure, not only did we stand up ES within two weeks, enterprise security, we also onboarded all my custom stuff, like PowerShell scripts, everything else. So we brought in Active Directory data into Splunk and made it a PVR for us. So we can go back in time and look at anyone, who their manager was, anything that's happened to that account, 
at that exact time. And we can correlate that with IP information, everything else. As well, we have our, all of our floors are mapped out. We know where you are in any given building or facility. So we were able to do that at a point in time, because there's a PVR. We don't lose that information. And that was, that's, that's data enrichment, and we couldn't do that in the old system. So you had a time machine for your machine yeah, data. it is, oh, absolutely. Okay, uh, cool. Now, uh, back to your business a little bit. So there's a physical security aspect of, mm -hmm. of what you guys have to worry about a, as well. And, and I'm wondering if you could, could talk about that and how just the sort of attitude, you, you touched on this before, Kent, but how the attitudes towards security have changed and evolved over the last decade. Obviously, great, greater awareness. Has that trickled into you know, the, the lines of business or is it still mostly a, a, an IT and a security pro? problem. I'll let I, I can answer so, this one. So um, really uh, for us um, it's been a journey uh, for the last little while um, around security and one of, uh, a couple of things we've had um, over the past few years is um, spreading the awareness uh, for around security across the business. So, um, and that's really gained traction where it's no longer just the IT security folks talking to the business about what they need to do for security, but also the business getting back to IT security and try, once they want to uh, implement certain uh, solutions, trying to figure out, okay, what do we do for security? Um, can you help assist us with something around risk assessment? And um, really, over time, that has really helped spread that awareness. And um, also, we do a whole lot of things around trying to build our security program through performing assessments uh, that will be useful to identify gaps. And uh, being able to communicate with these stats to senior management around getting the necessary buy-in to proceed with whatever initiatives uh, we want to go run along with from a security standpoint. You want to add to that? I think that's good. Yeah, you, you, I mean, I, I'm sensing that Prior to Splunk, it was an uphill battle to get yep. management yes. to, 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 to invest. Because they probably said, all right, we're going to throw money at it, and what, what's the result that we're going to yeah. get? Mm -hmm. As you can present metrics to management, yep. it's easier to justify the investments because they're going to be able to see the outcomes. Is that yep. fair? Oh, yes, definitely. Um, I think uh, prior to Splunk, really, um, we had certain sets of metrics, but what Splunk has really helped us we, uh, do, uh, do is really consolidate all the log sources we have, get the right information, and be able to actually provide them um, uh, a holistic view of our security program to senior management and show them um, um, across the different business units where we can get value uh, for investment thrown into security. And, and have you evaluated alternatives? You know, I know competitors have been bumped up in the past couple of years. Have you evaluated those or did you at the time? I don't know, so. Yeah, so in 2009 we looked at a few different vendors and we picked a market leader at the time. Um, there was a couple that we liked more than the market leader but they just didn't scale to our size. Back in those days, you know, certain vendors would call it events per second or whatever. And mm -hmm. We did some analysis and go, it just can't scale. That one back in 2009 is now a market leader, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty good, it looks really interesting everything. As well, there's about two or three players out there that I think look great from a SIM perspective. But if you think of us, where we are at, a SIM is a component, but we actually have a platform. And management's bought into the platform, not only a SIM, they didn't even know what a SIM really was before, say, 2013. And now, they just know that we can provide information when they ask for it. If we don't know, we can get the answer within minutes or maybe hours sometimes, depending on the complexity of the query. But we have all the information. We have our PVR, time machine, as you mentioned. It's all sitting there. We brought in <laughs> most of our data. We've got a couple of little pieces we're still working on. You know, There's different cloud information we're bringing or other data enrichment, like, we can tell, for example, an ISP anywhere in the world. We can tell our user visited that ISP or that attacker came from that ISP. Let's lock that whole ISP out, for mm -hmm. example. We have a lot of interesting capabilities where we don't know if we can do that in those other tools. Yeah. So, so what's, your, what's your headache of the future? I mean, what, uh, it sounds like that Splunk has done a lot to get you up to speed and get you to a very high comfort level now. Yeah. You know, looking down the road here, what's, what's the next? I'll quickly start with it, and I think I kind of want to speak to this as well. One of the things that we need to do is we're getting better at detecting and responding. Uh, we, we really focus a lot on prevention to make sure that we can prevent what we can, but it's impossible to you know, basically prevent everything. Everybody knows that, you see it in the news. So we're trying to get better at detection and response. One of the shortcomings that we notice is we can't always respond as humans fast enough. So 
-hmm. We're trying to automate that, get richer information, which Splunk allows us to do. So we call them like high fidelity alerts or high confidence alerts. Mm -hmm. So if we see that, that should never happen in our environment, we'll shut that workstation down, disable that account, or cut off that subnet or something like that. So it'll all be automated. And then us as a team, we'll come back after the fact and look at it and go, oh, yeah, that was good. Or, oops, we made a mistake, sorry about that. And we'll bring the machine back online. Yeah, apologize after. After, after, after the week. Because they move so quickly if they get, or at least what we're seeing, these adversaries move fast. How about, oh, you want to add yeah, to that? No, I think um, really um, the, the key, the, the way we look at our security program is uh, just uh, being on a journey, because the threat landscape changes like by minutes or days, really. And um, um, there's never that point where we'll say, we are done, we are, we are, we are fully um, okay from our security standpoint. So we constantly look at where we need to evolve. Um, a lot of attacks now are, attack, are looking at uh, cloud services. So we are trying to see how we can show off uh, cloud services that we use, pull the log information where we can, and that try to actually enhance what we are currently doing. There's really no silver bullet to, to um, solving the issue of security, so it's really constantly looking at where we can derive efficiencies to help our program. I wanted to ask you about pricing. Are you a, a, a Splunk Cloud customer? You pay a subscription? You have a uh, perpetual we, we, license? We uh, did the subscription, the term. Okay. Um, we're evaluating potentially moving to the cloud. It would be okay. at near the 20, end of 2018. Um, we're not sure how we're going to go. Maybe we'll just put it in, say, one of the like AWS or Azure right. instead of maybe going with a cloud offering. Because personally, we like tweaking and doing a couple things under the hood. Mm -hmm. So there's a little more change control in cloud. Um, at least at the moment, maybe that'll change over time. But we like to be able to quickly onboard data, do all this as fast as we can uh -huh. when we need to. And, so. and, and are you priced this Splunk Charger by sort of the amount of data, or how is by it? By the amount of data. Amount okay, of data. and so my, my follow-up is, as the amount of data exponentially, as that data curve, growth curve, kind of grows, reshapes, if you will, are you concerned about just the, the whole pricing model? Does it have to? I'll take it, that one. I'll, I'll, yeah. so, the interesting, interesting thing about Splunk, it's actually disruptive, or disruptor, or it can displace technologies within your environment, right? So we really try to consolidate things down and take out things that aren't needed. So in certain scenarios, um, we do a lot of vulnerability scanning and all that. We don't necessarily go buy the top, top end product and spend a lot of money on that. We might buy something else or maybe even use open source in the future, who knows but get the information into Splunk and then use Splunk to do all the analysis. So we, it's, we're paying like one or 2% of what a typical cost would be and that license itself would pay for Splunk. So you're getting asset leverage there. Yeah. Okay, it, and it, pay, yeah. it pays for the, the, as well, the data growth. As well, we're finding other benefits in the environment using predictive analysis, for example. We Splunked all of our storage and I gave that to my boss and I go, here you go, what do you think? And you can predict it out a quarter, you know, half a year or a year and he was just ready to you know, buy basically a million dollars of hardware and said, geez, I don't need to do that. So That's you, pretty cool. You're so using Splunk as a capacity planning tool. As well, yeah. Yeah. we use it for many purposes, yeah. Very interesting. That like so a good, it's actually, yeah. that, that sounds like a, a good year in bonus to me there, Ken. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right. Good job. You know, uh, you're, 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 are, are you gentlemen both came down from Canada, is that right? Yes, we did. So my apologies yeah, for the unseasonably warm weather here. <laughs> but right. uh, I'm glad it. we have the lights on, which is something you're very familiar with, right? <laughs> Transalta. Yeah. Thanks for the time. Thank uh, you. Interesting awesome. conversation. Glad you both could be here with us today. Thanks Thank for inviting you. us. Thanks for inviting us. All right. Continue more our coverage here on theCUBE at .com 2017. We'll be live here in Washington, D.C. Take a little break back at 1.30 Eastern time. See you then.